Hello everyone, welcome to Embertronics. In this video, we are going to see how to interface the Ethernet cable and RJ45 to the STM32 and we can do the data transfer using the HTTP protocol. Let's get started. Open the STM32 cube IDE. Create a new STM32 project. In this demo, I am going to use STM32 F767ZI development board. I am going to give a name as HTTP uh, example. Okay, just click finish. Okay, the project has been created. First, we will enable the Ethernet. Just click, uh, sorry, uh, click Ethernet. And mode, you can use that RMII. Okay, now check the configuration. So these pins are enabled for this Ethernet. Okay, but check that uh, data sheet. See the pins. PA1, PA2, PC1, PA7, PC4, PC5, PG11, uh, PG13, PB13. If you see here in this uh, uh, this one, so PG13 and PG11 is not there. So we have to enable those pins based on our hardware. Ethernet TX0 and PG11 is Ethernet TX enable. Okay, that's it. Now we'll go to that middle uh, middleware and click the lower IP enable that okay in this we'll just go to platform settings so here I'm going to use LAN 8742 here also LAN 8742 then click the general settings uh, I don't want to uh, assign that IP address dynamically I want to enable that uh, static IP so disable this DHCP then give your IP address that you want okay this is our IP address and net mask could be 255 sorry uh, 255 255 255 0 this gateway is 192 168 0 1 okay now we have provided our IP address. Then click the HTTPD. Enable this uh, lower IP HTTPD. Mostly we are done. Now we will enable that yeah, onboard LED. That is just for debug purpose. I am going to enable that. So here PB0. We will make that as a uh, GPIO output. Okay, we are almost ready. Now we will configure the clock it will just automatically resolve the issues so I am not going to give any uh, specific values I am going with this automatic clock issue resolver okay if you want to give your value you can give the values based on your board here I am going to use automatic clock issue resolver okay now it has solved our issue let's save this so this will uh, generate the output. We have got the template. Now let me include the header file. So we have included the HTTP.s. Then we will have initialize that HTTP. Make sure you are entering all the codes between that user code begin and user code end. So I am going to use one variable and I will explain you about this variable later. We have initialized the HTTP. Now we can use our code. Start our lower IP process. So it has started the process. I told you right. So we have enabled one onboard LED for debug purpose. So I wanted to see whether this function is getting called continuously. 
so i'm going to toggle that led so i'm just incrementing that local variable if count is just i'm putting some random number because this will be executed very fastly so we cannot see that led blinking so i wanted to blink led after some time so that's why i put that uh, value now we'll call that uh, hl function i'll reset the count so every 10000 time it will toggle so we can see some blinking if you see that blinking can come to know that this mac mx lw ip process is getting called continuously okay let's build this code okay we have got the error so it is telling that fs data custom dot c is not found okay so we'll have to create this data so just download this uh, fs data maker dot zip file okay i have downloaded it already and if you go inside this fs i have two html files one is index uh, dot html and 404 dot html you can see this web page right so we are going to transfer this web page from the stm32 to this browser if you open this 404 html you will get this page for this we cannot uh, give the html file to the stm32 so we will have to convert this file to the .c file for this we are going to use this make fs data dot pl perl script so if you want to run the perl script you will have to install the perl so you can install that perl from this official website okay as i have installed already let me run this uh, perl script let me open the terminal so i'm going to run that uh, first data so ah, this one when you run this it will generate the two files which is fs data custom dot c and fs data dot c just copy these two files and paste it to our project click the lower sorry not lower right, middleware third party lower ip source apps http just right click this and paste those files that we have copied see that if fs data custom and fs data is there now we'll build it again but still we will get an error hmm. we have got an error right so what we have to do is we will have to exclude these files from the build so go to resource configuration exclude from build and we'll have to exclude from both debug and release okay now those two files have been excluded now we can build it again now let me open that stm32 cube programmer uh, let's connect to the st link okay now i'm going to erase the complete flash okay mos array successfully achieved now we can close this let's load this program run this program now okay debugger we can select whatever you want just click ok okay no st link detected okay we have to disconnect disconnect that from this one i have disconnected now let me rerun it okay let's run that so we can see that led is blinking continuously but the lan cable is not connected to that uh, router now let's verify that so our ip address would be 
192.168.1.25 if you run that you you won't get anything because that that is not connected to the router it won't find that ip address so we cannot ping that ip address also it, we cannot get that html file right now let me connect this stm32 to the router okay now that has been connected to the router let's run this ip address see we have got our pages that we have fed into that fsdata.h sorry dot c right now let's try to get the 404 error i'm just randomly giving some uh, value here after slash so that we get that 404 error see we are getting 404 error so now the data transfer is happening between that stm32 and this pc through the router i hope you have learned something today in our next tutorial we will see how to control the STM32 from our machine using this Ethernet cable. So if you like our video, make sure sharing this video with your friends so they can also learn something new. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow our website. Thank you.